Lo, yeah. I got you something. Go see what's in the driveway. I'll give you a hint. It's not that CTSV. Yeah, yeah, check it out. This is my baby, and ain't nobody finna touch him. This right here hasn't seen the light of day in at least eight months. And, and I'll tell you what, I haven't put a thousand miles on it since the day I purchased it. But it still makes me smile every time I buy it. It's like a work of art. Let's see what's under the covers. This right here is my 94 Dodge Viper RT10 with 9,000 miles. Now, like I said, I haven't put a thousand miles on it since the day I purchased it, and I am completely okay with that. Because every time I come in the garage, I look at this piece of artwork and it makes me smile. That's the reason I purchased it. This right here is one of my dream cars, but this week I purchased another one of my dream cars. There she is, right there. This right here is a 2008 Audi R8 4.2 liter V8 with 420 horsepower in an all wheel drive Quattro. The car is so fun, but more importantly, it's beautiful. This is another work of art. Now, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. It is a gloomy spring day in New Hampshire, but welcome to our channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you all about my new Audi R8. This is the second one I've owned. The first one was an absolute dud, and this one, I hope, is significantly better than my first purchase. Let's check it out. Now, the really neat thing about this car is it was owned by a guy that owned an IT company. He was doing well for himself, and he also owned an auto detailing company on the side. He did it as a hobby, and he took care of this car. It was just ceramic coated, and you can tell by the way the rain just beads off the hood the perfection of this car. There is literally not a single scratch on this car. Now, the best part about it, I'm going to show you on the inside. Here's the reason I really purchased this car. This is a file of service records since new. Now, when you're buying anything special interest like this, anything high-end and anything expensive to repair, you wanna make sure you get a file of service records. You don't know the history of these cars, and a lot of times, like my previous R8, someone purchased it that could afford the car but couldn't afford the maintenance. So a lot of times it'll get neglected and, and things will go unrepaired. Now, the good thing about it is you'll see it was serviced at the Audi dealer as well. So not only was it serviced, it was serviced at the dealer. And it was just recently serviced at the dealer where they did a multi-point inspection and went through the whole car because it's still under an extended warranty. So that was the last selling feature of this car. It has 50,000 miles, which is high for a special interest vehicle like this, but with something with an extended warranty and records like that, it really doesn't scare me because this is a comfortable everyday driver supercar. Earlier this week, I got a call from a YouTube viewer. Somebody saw my videos on YouTube and called me and said, hey, I noticed you love Audi R8s. I have one, I wanna sell it. I need to go buy a house, I need a mortgage, so I need to pay off my Audi. You wanna buy it? First thing I said, yes, I wanna buy it. So if anybody has something cool that they wanna sell, keep me in mind all the time. There it goes. TTSV did not last very long. It's going to Kentucky. The guy flew up from Kentucky to buy that CTSV. But it's not such a sad day because we have this CTSV. Oh, wait. What happened today? This one sold. We actually sold two in one day. Two CTSVs, one day, they're both gone. Which is kind of bittersweet because what am I going to drive? Aha, uh -huh. wait for it. <laughs> this? Nah. Where is it? Where'd you guys put it? We bought a new toy this week. That's the only reason we let both CTSVs go. I was gonna just sell one and keep the other that didn't sell, but we bought something else and I have to pay it off. Bam. That right there, we bought an Audi R8, my dream car. Hopefully we have better luck with this one than we had with the first one. Oh, something special just showed up at the shop today. All right, let's check this thing out. Audi R8, how many miles? 50, uh, almost 54. Almost 54,000. All right, and why do you want to sell it? 
<laughs> Adult stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, original exhaust? Oh, uh, yeah. It sounded good pulling in. Yeah, the valves are opened up. And you said it has an existing warranty on it, right? Yeah, until July. <laughs> Any accident history? Nope. I'll pull up my trusty dealer app. I'm going to scan this VIN. And it will tell me accident history, owners, all that stuff. And even what I should be paying based on the mileage. 4.2 liter V8, I forget the horsepower and torque though. All the old owners stuff and owners before that. You have all these records for it? That's awesome. All the books are here. My R8 had like, it shifted really hard. I could feel it. This and one pretty much does the same thing. It does? Yeah, well, I think all of these single clutches do it. Yeah, I was told it was a single clutch, but it could have been that it was wearing out. There we go. All right. Now that felt a lot smoother than my R8 was. Most fun part about my job, <laughs> buying cars. So we ran all the monitors. You ran all the monitors. Ooh, this tire ran flat. Look at the edge right there. So we ran all the monitors. Oxygen sensor came up incomplete. Catalytic, catalytic converter came up incomplete, which is really scary on these cars because it's going to be crazy expensive. That was a problem in my R8. What we did come up with though, it's under warranty and it's already been serviced at Audi. So we called Audi and talked about it and they said it w if it had come up as a red flag, it would have been taken care of under warranty and the warranty's covered until July anyway. So my concern was, you know how many sellers would gladly clear a light and then trade it in or sell it to us and never tell us uh, and then we're the bad guys. I don't think that there's no reason that he would have ever done that because it's under warranty. So if it ever popped up, it would be taken care of by the dealership. So real quick. I think we're good. So it's officially mine. Yep. I just got to double check. Make sure I don't have anything in it. All right. Thanks for making it easy. Thanks. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Go take it for a ride. These are my dream cars. More than a Ferrari, more than a Lamborghini, even more than Porsche. There's something about these cars. I grew up loving Audis, and the R8 is something that you can drive comfortably. Ask my wife. I have to swap cars with my wife. Let's see how she reacts when she finds out she has to drive this thing home. Hey guys. Pikachu. Hey. Here. Pika. Thank you. All right. So you have to obviously put your foot on the brake, start it up. I'll just show you if you want. Yeah, go ahead. We're regular key goes. It's not any fancy push to start like your Honda. <laughs> All right, now you have to lower the emergency brake. Okay. You have to push the shifter over to your left. Shifter to the left? Or yeah. To the left? Oh, okay. All the way over. See how it says A for auto on the dash? Does yeah. it say A? Yeah. You leave it in A, okay? Now you don't have to touch it. It'll automatically so shift. How do I park when I get into the driver? All right, you leave it in A and pull the emergency brake. You have to pull the emergency brake or to roll. So there's no park? There's no park. Now to go into reverse, push it all the way to the right back and now oh, it should say okay. R right yeah if it says M M stands for manual you're gonna I have to manual. hold it to the left until it says a okay, okay? you good I think so. I'll probably be calling you. all right okay can you <laughs> two hours later break on Hey, how was it? It was amazing. Oh, was it? It was really cool. I didn't actually think I'd get that reaction out of you. Oh, uh, it was fun, and it's very comfortable. Did she go fast? <laughs> she did? Three times. Did you go the back roads to I fit did. the curves? Yeah, he, uh, I only went to like 60. 
but it hit 60 pretty quick. Wow, I'm actually really surprised to get that reaction from you. No, you don't feel like you're in a sports car. Like your typical sports car that you, I've driven. You're tight, you're low. This one I felt like I was just driving a regular car until you hear that. Sort of <laughs> See, I told you. This car, I can drive every single day comfortably, get good gas mileage, it's reliable, it's fun as hell, and it gets looks everywhere you go. Now, the Audi stereo is obviously dated. It's from 2008, but you can even see the gauge cluster, the steering wheel, the flat bottom of the steering wheel. It's sophisticated and still pretty modern for a 13-year-old car. Now, as these cars progressed in age, as they got newer, they upgraded the options to a 5.2-liter V10, which was also shared in a Lamborghini. And when you get inside the Lamborghini, you'll also notice the interior is very similar to the Audi R8. Why? Well, Audi owns Lamborghini. So you'll notice that the 5.2 liter is a Lamborghini engine. When you get into the inside of the Lamborghini, it's the same as the R8. We have your mid-engine 4.2 liter V8. That sounds incredible right behind your head. It's not too loud. It just sounds like music if you can appreciate cars. We have the staggered size 19 inch wheels, giant R8 calipers and rotors. And we even have the frunk push of a button. It pops open. We can open it from right here. Ah! Hey, how'd you get in there? Get out of my car. <laughs> Thanks. See you later. Tons of space in the frunk. Now, a lot of people said, Craig, get the 5.2, get the V10. I don't want the 5.2. I don't want the V10, and I don't want it in a gated six speed. Yes, it's fun, but I want to use this thing regularly. I want to use it all the time. I want it in an automatic, and I want it in a reliable V8. Now, listen to this thing start. So this car shares the same engine as the Audi RS4. The 4.2 liter is not the one you get in the S4. And despite the fact that it's just a 4.2 liter V8, it sounds incredible. And it rips down the road when you're driving. Now the thing that is a little difficult to get used to is the automatic transmission with a single disc clutch. So shifting it here, you'll see reverse is over and back. But there's still a delay when going into gear, so it's almost like it has a clutch. You'll see I'm rolling forward right now. And the same thing from putting it in drive, I have the option of the manual mode, which I can also use in the paddle shifters. And then I can just tap it over to automatic and I'm in automatic mode. So I can drive it as an automatic car and it actually does shift at higher points, but I'd prefer drive it in manual mode and push the shifter forward per gear, which is still more fun for me to drive it that way. And I think it's better on the clutch and the transmission. Now in 2008, something I would expect to see is the CD changer in the rear. What I wouldn't expect to see in something as 13 years old is the auxiliary spot right here. So even with the factory radio, despite the fact that it doesn't have Bluetooth, I can still pair my phone to it. But one thing that's kind of neat are these WeatherTech floor mats. I took these and kept them out of my previous R8. So these I kept intentionally knowing that one day I would come across another dream car. Talking about dream cars, this right here is a dream car of mine since I was a child, a 94 Dodge Viper RT10. Now I have a poster of it on my wall in my office and I have a mural of it painted on my wall in my office as well. This is a kid's dream car. If they make a Hot Wheel of it, then you know it's a cool car. The funny thing about the Viper is you'll notice no windows. The windows are tucked into my trunk. There's also no door handles. So the windows unzip, I reach in and open the door from here. This thing has been sitting for a few months on a trickle charger. Let's see if it starts up. Now I haven't had it running since last summer. I don't use it very often and when I do, it's just to drive to work to put out front and make my shop look nicer. Let's see if it starts up. Ah, so close. So she's a purring now. Now these seats hold me in like I'm wearing a glove. They're nice and tight. Squeeze me into my legs and squeeze me in on sides. Now I've done a ton of videos on this car in the past. So if you're curious about what it's like to daily drive this thing, because I tried it for a week and it was miserable, you can find those videos in like way back in the past. I've done a bunch of info and how to's on this car too. So go check it out if you're at all interested in it. This, like I said, is a dream car of mine. This is something I want to keep and never sell. The Audi R8, I'll probably sell it eventually, but for now I want to have a really good time with it. I had the S7 all winter long. I bring my kids up to the mountains. It was great because they could ski with it until now I don't have to do that. 
so I can use the R8 for the summer. Who on earth just has an extra set of WeatherTech mats for that car? Oh, I do. So here are my WeatherTechs for the Audi R8. So you all ask where I get it from. I'm in the middle of editing tonight's video and my dad shows up with this thing that he just bought. Not a dealer, just bought it because he was bored on a rainy day. Let's go check this Corvette out. It's a 78. Yeah, four speed. 78 four speed with T-tops. I'm sure the T-tops are leaking. 350 matching numbers. I always like the shark body and those door handles. I like that it's a four speed. Oh, the emergency brake works, huh? Hang on, I can't move. Hey, it's raining out. <laughs> You all ask, why do I torture myself? I get it from him, I guess. All right, I'm going in, it's raining. Congratulations. Right, I'll see you. A bunch of people have requested another video on my bicycles from the 90s. So like I said, here's my Kent Super Scooter from 1987. This is my Stranger Things Mongoose replica. This is my favorite bike. This is a 2017 GT Performer, GT tires. This is a replica to the early 90s Performer. This is my first BMX bike, a Harrow Screamer with shocks, dyno air with dyno clear grips and white GT tires on their mags, a dyno comp, 100% original from 1993, again, GT tires, and then here is another GT performer, and my Huffy Sonic 6 from when I was seven years old. Now, somebody had said to me earlier this week on Instagram, Craig, is that just you flexing on us? No. If you've been following along, you know I didn't start with any of this stuff. I started off selling Volkswagen Jettas and Ford Focuses. But I made better decisions. I started buying nicer cars and the business grew slowly and consistently. Slow and steady growth. Remember I told you that before. And as things grow, you can move up to better and bigger things. Now I'm heading off to Tacoma, Washington this week to compete on American Ninja Warrior Season 13. So stay tuned, subscribe now, so I'll show you what it's like behind the scenes, how I got on the show, if I did well, if I didn't do well, the whole thing. So if you want to experience it alongside me, make sure to subscribe down below. Give me a thumbs up if this video was at all helpful. I'm going to do a lot more videos on the R8. I just wanted to get some content out there to show you because I was super excited about this thing. If you haven't subscribed yet, what's the deal? Go ahead and subscribe down below. And last thing, see this shirt? My favorite shirt, super comfortable, baseball tee. These are for sale if you want to help support my channel. I spent a lot of time making this content. I spent a lot of time hopefully showing and teaching you guys things that I do, that I've learned, my mistakes that I've made, and you can learn from them instead of having to make those same mistakes. So if you want to help support me, buy some of my clothing. Hats, shirts, hoodies, whatever. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll see you all later. Adios.